Welcome back to Is It Still Good, the channel that watches older films and lets you know if they still hold up. Today, we're going to watch a movie that everybody seems to universally really like, and I've always really liked this movie. It's an action-y film, action-adventure drama, 2000's Gladiator. And this one's rated 8.5 out of 10 on IMDb. It's written by David Franzoni, John Logan, and William Nicholson. It's directed by Ridley Scott, and I think that played a big part in why everybody loves this film so much, why it looks so good. Just a great, great movie starring Hollywood heartthrob Russell Crowe, Joaquin Phoenix, Connie Nelson, and others. Richard Harris plays Marcus Aurelius. It's just, you know, a really good cast, really good seasoned actors uh, peppered throughout this film. I really liked Oliver Reed as Proximo. He's really good in it. And uh, Russell Crowe, you know, delivers a great performance. Uh, supporting character uh, Juba, played by Jimon Honsao. He's really, really good too. So, yeah, really good actors, really interesting story, loosely based in historical fiction, you could say. Maximus is a powerful Roman general, loved by the people and the aging emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Before his death, the emperor chooses Maximus to be his heir over his own son, Commodus, and a power struggle leaves Maximus and his family condemned to death. The powerful general is unable to save his family, and his loss of will allows him to get captured and put into the gladiator games until he dies. The only desire that fuels him now is the chance to rise up to the top so that he will be able to look into the eyes of the man who will feel his revenge. It's a really good uh, synopsis, actually. So, again, like I said, this is action-adventure drama, rated R, runs 2 hours 35 minutes, little bit on the longish side if you ask me, as per the huge. But it's just very well directed, really good acting, I enjoyed this movie a great deal, had a lot of fun with it, watched it in two parts because it's a little bit long, but it's one of those movies everybody should see. It's Russell Crowe pretty much at his best. I really liked him in LA Confidential and a few other films, but he's very good in this, and I really enjoy this story. I think it speaks to the, um, I don't know, to the American public a lot too. You know, the idea of, uh, you know, the voice of the people, the Senate rising up to take power. The Colosseum has always held a fascination for a lot of us. As an Italian-American, I think it's pretty cool, you know? But on the whole, I just really like the way it was shot. Um, it just looks great. Ridley Scott movies always look really good, you know? Really rich darks and blacks and, you know, that light blue of, of night shots and um, really captures natural light well. Good, good acting in this. Uh, just a lot of fun. I mean, just a little bit on the longest side. As a matter of fact, some of my favorite parts in the film are when they kind of flash ahead a little bit. So, spoilers. But, like in the beginning when he first becomes a gladiator, for example, he, you know, insinuates that he's not going to fight in training. And they throw him out into the games and, of course, his instincts take over. He does very well and survives his first encounter. If you're paying attention, it kind of flashes forward to him in slightly better armor. And he's walking past the men who have all called him Spaniard. He's, he's not Spanish, but they think he is because he just really doesn't answer who he is and what he does. So everybody is kind of showing him respect as Spaniard, and that's what they call him. It isn't until, like, you know, the middle of the film when he's fought so well that they're invited to the Colosseum. And the reason being is because the Emperor, Commodus, now Emperor, who killed his father to get the title, basically calls for 150 days of games to distract the people from uh, all his nefarious political nonsense going on behind the scenes. So, very interesting, and a lot of that did happen in Rome, I know that. And it's just kind of cool. So, Maximus kind of fights his way up until he is a, uh, until he is a famous gladiator. And, of course, Commodus wants to come down and meet him, and Maximus has no choice but to show him his face and kind of uh, announce who he really is. And once it gets out that he was a former general in the Roman army and a very, very well-respected and beloved one, it shifts the power balance of the crowd to being in favor of Maximus. So it's a really interesting kind of cat and mouse thing. And because Maximus's real motivation in the story is just to be reunited with his dead wife and dead son, it's kind of interesting. So like when he's, you know, wrongfully betrayed at the end by Commodus and... Commodus challenges him to one-on-one -on -one combat, but cheats and gives him a, uh, a fatal wound before the match even starts. When Maximus is able to finally kill Commodus, and then he himself passes on, it's a, uh, 
it's a very kind of beautiful ending. You know, some of the more famous lines in this movie, what we do in this life echoes in eternity. Great line. Very, very cool. We are all but shadows and dust. A lot of this stuff is taken from the writings of Marcus Aurelius, who wrote Meditations. Uh, kind of uh, the sort of Bible of uh, modern stoicism, if you will. And it's just a really cool movie. Very well done. So I'm going to give it a number score, but first I'm going to try to sell you guys a couple of my novels I've written. Okay, those are my books and the audiobook for Unkillable Joe, which I'm very, very proud of. Uh, should be out either now-ish or soon-ish, so keep looking for that. I should have a release date soon, if not by this video, by the next one. So thank you guys for the support. If you really want to support the channel, we do have a Patreon, but you can also just buy one of my books. Uh, go into a Barnes & Noble and order one. They will stock them from then on. And uh, I just really appreciate you guys, or anywhere you get your books. Anyway, okay, number score for Gladiator. Now, I really like this movie a lot. It's a great movie, but like I said, it's a little bit on the longish side. If you're not into the swordplay elements, you're not into the political espionage elements, you don't really care about historical Rome, let's say. Well, then it's not really going to connect with you that much now, is it? But it is a universally accepted good film. And for that, I give it the old honest 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. It's a fine score. It's a great movie. Is this movie good enough to get into my Hall of Fame playlist? I'm gonna have to think on that. I think just underneath, to be honest. But it is a great movie, it is definitely worth watching, but you just might need to break it in two parts if you have stuff to do. Put it that way. Either way, everybody's excellent in it. The writing is clean, the directing is very sharp looking. Probably the highlight of the film is the soundscape, soundtrack, and directing. It just looks beautiful. The action is very clear, you can always kind of tell what's going on. Eh, you can't really beat it as far as like compared to modern film gladiator crushes most movies now so most action films anyway so yeah check it out russell crowe at the top of his game very very good movie highly recommend eight out of ten thank you guys for the support and watching the channel and we'll see you next time is it still good Ha 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 ha!